about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking rated. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed. And like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, man, one of my subscribers provided me a crazy opinion, and uh, I want to talk about it because I think it's a it's a serious topic, and it's you know it's a hell of a lot better than talking about prison topics. And these are the kind of topics I look forward to for growth, for to become self educated and better educated, and also to start conversations amongst my audience because I know my audience is a smart, intelligent individual, and I love you guys' perceptions on things. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up, and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time, and most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. I dropped a couple of videos in regards to the end of hostilities and then the, the situations that occurred in Salinas Valley State Prison and in the other prison. And dude, honestly, I don't take nothing personal. Yeah, I did receive a lot of criticism. You know, I received a lot of, you know, but a lot of input though. A lot of input that I, th I thought was important. And I'm watching the, the audience members have discussions with one another. And it's intriguing. It's interesting to see everybody come together and share their thoughts and their opinions, support one another. Bro, I'm proud of him. I'm proud. Even though that, you know, I received most of the criticism, I'm proud of how everybody else came together and talked about it. This, this comment right here stood out to me. It says, everybody has an opinion, and that's great, but one thing that's going to rule at the end of the day is what people see and feel. And for years, the innocent, hardworking Rasa have been victims to blacks' nonsense crimes with no repercussions. So at the end of the day, it is a race thing that blacks started, and in doing so, pissed off a lot of Rasa out here. The blacks are on a good one right now, now that they have the government making them feel like they're superior to all races. Now, that last part, I don't, I don't understand that, so maybe you're going to have to educate me on that. Second... Every, like, I, like I've always said, everybody's opinion matters. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. The only comments that YouTube or, or myself get rid of is like when people are just, just blatantly disrespectful to me just because they don't like me and what I'm doing. Then, yeah, I'll get rid of those. But other comments, I leave them there so other people can discuss it amongst themselves. Now, this comment comes from the end of hostility situation with what's going on in the prison system over a prison riot that happened between the blacks and the Sureños. It hasn't even been clarified if Northerners got involved. Because I was told by a Southsider it was a personal issue. The Sureños wanted to take care of this situation. They didn't need the Northerners. And just like I was told by a Norteño that's locked up, said, man, the agreement is, you know, if it's, if it's a personal issue, an isolated incident, the Northerners jump in if another Aranfla jumps in. But they'll stand sideline. But the thing about it is, if a Northerner catches a Southerner in traffic and he's getting jumped by a different ethnicities, yeah, he jumps in. The Paisa jumps in for a Northerner. So on and so forth. If it's spontaneous, if it's, you know, pretty much just the whole car against Rasa. But when they said when it comes to certain circumstances, it differentiates. That's what I was told, not only by an active Southerner, but by an active Northerner that reach out to these platforms and give us this kind of information. See, with this comment, I just don't want nothing to get blown out of proportion. I don't want to make something bigger than what it is. Right now, we're talking about prison politics. And how prison politics conduct themselves when it comes to uh, business and situations and diplomacy and, you know, revenge and reaction. That's prison stuff. But the more we talk about this current situation and we're getting a lot of people that are in prison involved in the comment sections, instigating the situations even further. We're failing to realize that sometimes these prison politics spill over to the streets. And I don't think we want that to happen. Yeah, it's okay for us to talk about, you know, a raza uniting a raza in the penal system. But in doing so, we shouldn't be, we should be doing it on the basis that we just want to see the, the North and the South stop fighting for once. Stop fighting for once and learn to live with each other and at least eliminate that problem. Because that's a problem that's amongst a raza in itself, the North and South going at it all the time, even on the streets. Let's figure out that problem first before we decide to say, you know what, let's unite and go against any other ethnicity that we consider that bullies us or mistreats us or disrespects us. I'm not saying any ethnicity is perfect. All I ever said was us standing united as one race, as one car, as one entity is a good thing. As long as we don't become like the same people who we argue about and we talk about and we disrespect. If a lot of people are going to say, hey, man, when blacks come together, they bully and they, they prey on weaker people and so on and so forth and they rob our vendors. OK, 
those are those are those are situations that we can fight for and stand up for. But as long as we don't become that. Because this person pointed out, you know, some incidences he's seen, he's seen on social media. And, and I have a lot of subscribers that shoot me these videos. Videos like this. You know, this lady attacked a taco stand. She got terminated from her job. And the company that she worked for actually hired these people for a catering service. And now Arrasa has their business booming. Their taco stand is booming now. So the community comes in to support these people. And then I read the comment section, and there's a lot of people from the black community are like, hey, bro, we don't support this. We respect our Mexican brothers and sisters. So just because a certain group of a certain ethnicity, an uh, ethnic group, should I say, does something like this, we're going to hold everybody accountable? Or just because you grew up in a certain environment, in a certain neighborhood, in a certain area of California where you've seen those kind of acts, you're just going to assume everybody of that same ethnic background and ethnic group all over the United States conducts themselves in the same fashion. Look at what well, look at what Trump said on his in his presidential campaign that we're going to build a wall, we're going to build borders because Mexicans are this and Mexicans are that, and then he uses the R word on us, and then he he cleaned it up with like some people are good, some Mexicans are good people, but and he just you know he tried to outline it like it was just a criminal element, which it really it wasn't. He was targeting us as you know people that commit R's. Not everybody in society targeted Mexicans like, hey, bro, yeah, whatever Trump said, bro, we believe, bro, all you guys are that. No. The nation didn't hold all Mexicans accountable, but you've seen a lot of people, you know, rise out the, out the ground, you know, like the nationalists and all that, trying to push our people across the border. See, the thing about it is, yeah, I've did, I have seen it on social media, you know, Mexican vendors, you know, hardworking Mexicano innocent people. You know, promote these businesses, create these businesses, share our food, share our, share our culture with the streets and other ethnicities so everybody can enjoy. Who doesn't love Mexican tacos? Who doesn't love tortas? Who doesn't love enchiladas? Trust me, I get what they're saying and I get what you're saying too. But I can't honestly say that, you know, we're perfect because we're not. See, I grew up and my big homies, my older homies from my neighborhood, you know what kind of hustle they put me on? We had a lot of bars in Tulare County back in the day. Angelinas, the Five High, and there was like two other ones uh, before El Prez changed to something different, whatever it's called now. Our homies used to say, hey, go to the flea market and rob these spices. And when you do, make sure you take their boots off because that's where they hide all the money. That was our easy come up back in the day. Bro, I can't sit here and say if I'm all about uniting a raza, but when back in the day, when I was 18 years old, I was actually robbing taco stands. I was actually robbing Mexicanos, paisanos that were selling dope in my neighborhood or in another homie's neighborhood. I did that. So that same selective outrage that you're utilizing towards, you know, a certain ethnic group, you can use that same energy and that same outrage towards people like me that have committed it in the past. I will never do it now. I think, there, I think everybody at some point, whatever background you're from, there's people in that ethnic group that's preyed on other people, preyed on weaker people. And took advantage of other people. Think about it. You can't tell me that it never happened down south on Mexican robbing a paisa down south. Because I know it happens a lot up north. My homies taught us to go after these guys, you know, the field workers. Because they get the rich. But this was before the contracts came out with the, for the fields and they get paid by the hour. We're talking about back in the day when they were getting paid on the table. So it was just fat wads of money. Told us what, when to go out to the fields and rob these dudes when they get paid on the table cash on hand. That was, that's what I was taught by the other Mexicans. So we're not perfect neither. So we can't play the innocent card and play the victim card and accuse other people of trying to play the victim card either. So everybody's perception is different. And I do understand that. I just won't accept this kind of way of thinking for myself. You're more than welcome to think like that. I just don't. I look at it like everybody, there's just criminals. So what are we supposed to say when you got all these black gangs on the East Coast just taking each other out? Do, are we going to sit there and make fun of them? Like, yeah, black on black crime, let them take each other out. When a lot of people are saying, hey, if Mexicans are going at it with other Mexicans on the streets, the north versus south, let them take each other out. Because, you know, that's all the people up top. That's what they're thinking. Yeah, let these fools take each other out. I mean, we're going to call it ethnic cleansing. Since back in the day, ethnic cleansing meant a whole different meaning. But now we're just falling into that category by doing it ourselves, by committing crime against one another. Blacks against Mexicans, Mexicans against Mexicans, blacks against blacks, whites against whites, whites against blacks.
We're all doing this and destroying the neighborhoods who we're proud to represent, we're proud to live in, proud to raise our kids in. Well, back in the day, there was practices of that by racist people, by people like the Texas Rangers who didn't want to see the migration of those million Mexicans that walked. You know, you know the story of La Manzana? What happened? All those Mexicans migrated from Mexico to all the way to Texas. Look at the laws that they passed during that time. We were second to black. And even though the country of Mexico was colonized and robbed and taken from its righteous owners, and now it's the United States and Mexico is a smaller portion down south with a border that divides us. Think about it like this. I go to Mexico right now. Do you realize how, how bad I would get treated by other Mexicanos on there because I don't speak Spanish like that? I'm a pocho, right? I'm plástico. Texas Mexicans are racist towards Cali Mexicans. East Coast Mexicans are racist towards West Coast Mexicans and vice versa. Hint that I come from Mexico up here to, to, to establish, just establish themselves and have a, just to have a better life because Mexico ain't doing nothing for them. They're still going to look at me kind of weird. They might ask for my help and I'll be willing to help. But now I'm just a Mexican-American. I'm not even Mexican. I'm a Hispanic because my parents are from Mexico. But since I'm not, I can't call myself a Mexican. I have to identify myself through the government, through applications as Hispanic. And people are okay with that. So I can't sit here and just say, hey, bro, I've seen a bunch of black people rob Mexican vendors and just hold the whole black community accountable for that. I can't do that. I really can't because I see Mexicans hurting Mexicans, Mexicans being racist towards Mexicans, Mexicans gangbanging on Mexicans. So I'll just sound like a hypocrite to myself because I've done that stuff my whole life and that's something that I ain't proud of no more. But some people can't seem to understand why I do my YouTube channel speak about what I speak about. If you notice, a lot of my videos is North going out with Southerners, Southerners going out with Northerners. I'm outlining the over the universal picture is that, bro, it's just us fighting each other. That's what they want. So we can sit here as Rasa and promote unity only because it's a YouTube topic about prison kicking off with two different ethnicities that's been going on for a long time. But the end of hostilities that was only decided by prison organizations who actually have been known, have been identified, who have been illustrated all over YouTube that prey on their own people and whack their own little homies. But since they said it was okay to, to unite, we're all going to just jump to that general understanding and that general sense like, yeah, Raza does need to come together. Do you think they do it with the utmost positive motive? Or is it just to fill their pockets and further their agenda like I've been saying, like others have been saying? So once the wars between the blacks in the south and the blacks in the north die down and it goes back to a regular program, what happens next? People are going to start targeting their own. We're going to see more removals by Sureños, more removals by Norteños at the hands of these elite powerful figures. And we're going to go back to the same conversation of like, look, man, we're just taking each other out. We're killing our own. Don't go to jail. You know, let's let, don't, don't let the youth go to jail. We can't limit ourselves on our way of thinking. See, we're over here allowing these individuals in prison to give us the approval and make it a point like, yeah, Raza needs to come together. But on the streets, are we doing that? We don't need these political organizations, these mafias in prison to tell us that we can unite as a Raza. We can be making those decisions by ourselves. Think about it, though, right? I talked about a filter that Bobo put out before he left, and I read it to you guys. It's going to start hitting the streets. The North and South will be at a ceasefire. They're going to learn to work together. And I talked to a homeboy that actually functions with the Salinas Regiment. He told me it's already in effect, that they're starting to work hand in hand. And they're going to try to put the guns down, you know, reduce the violence. It's slowly in progress, but it's slowly working. Then the next priority is this. All the North and South are going to come together from up North and down South, and they're going to go after SNY inmates. SNY inmates like myself have become the threat have become a security threat. And guess what? There's a vast majority of SNY inmates that are Mexican. Are we going to dismiss that? Are we going to say, hey, bro, yeah, forget it. The North and South, you know, United as a raza, hell yeah, let's do this. Oh, but they're going to go after the SNYs that are Mexican because a lot of them chose to stop banging and a big portion of them chose to join STG groups and go after these organizations. Yeah, let them clean each other out. Is it going to be the same topics like, hey, bro, we need to stop the violence altogether? That's still a Mexican? No, because you're going to see a lot of actors like, hey, bro, they ain't Mexican. They ain't nothing, bro. They're cowards. They quit banging. They debriefed. They snitched. They were on the yards with the, with the pedos and everybody else. 
So that makes it okay. We can't just pick and choose when we want to unite and when we don't. We can't just pick and choose our battles like, okay, this is okay, but this one's not okay. When it's under the same concept of uniting a raza. Because once the North and South really finally put their guns down and shake hands and say, all right, let's go after these SNY inmates, let's see what happens. Let's see how many innocent people get hurt. Let's see how many, let's see how they really clean the streets. Let's see what this weeding out process looks like when it's Mexicans killing other Mexicans only because they quit banging and they're not banging no more. You're going to see a lot of SNY inmates getting targeted that don't even, that are not a part of STG groups that are on the SNY, but they're going to be held accountable because other groups have, you know, instigated situations and retaliated and fought a bigger revolution against active gang members. I can only hope the same narrative that's being preached now, Rasa uniting Rasa, comes into effect during that time as well. And I'm the one that actually shared that information. Like, yeah, the next people that are going to be, you know, targeted is the SNY inmates. And I'm an SNY. But I've been targeted since I started this YouTube channel. So there's really nothing I could do. I just have to learn to accept my terms and my conditions that I not only made for myself, but others have made for me as well. And I just have to live the life the best that I can. See, the thing about it is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the video like this. You know, I understand that the media pushes certain aspects of what's going on to the public's eye. I don't know if it's to make us think one way and brainwash us and institutionalize us to think about, you know, colorism in a different sense, in a different fashion. So just because I've seen a handful of videos of blacks targeting Mexican vendors, it's not going to just turn. I'm not going to allow the media to turn me racist. I won't. Nor will a YouTube topic turn me to become racist and hate the other ethnicity because I want to stand with brown. No. If I'm going to stand with brown and uniting brown, I'm going to do it for all the good reasons. And the reasons to be proud of, not to become like what we're up against. And think about it. If we're sitting here believing just what the, what, what the media puts out, what about the cartels? What do they do to the people down there? They're fighting over dirt. They're fighting over territory, over cities, over the drug trade. How many Mexicans lost their lives during those wars? That's why I say we just can't pick and choose selective outrage because we want to escalate a certain situation Especially in a situation that's stemming from prison politics when there's bigger and, and, and broader issues that we could be addressing when it comes to uniting Rasa to fight different problems. We have enough problems as it is than to worry about what's going on in prison and allowing that to, to, to influence the streets and cause more racial wars like it was back in the 90s and 80s, especially down south where it was big. I don't want to see my people go through that. That's all I'm saying. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.